In this lecture, we consider pixel-based image intensity transformations and derive relationships between the cumulative frequency distributions for the original and transformed images. Through the use of two examples, we show how these relationships can be used to determine a transformation that will give the transformed image a desired histogram. Well, here's an example of an intensity transformation that has an important mathematical property. If we look at this transformation, so it transforms intensities over the interval from zero to the maximum intensity, and this particular transformation has the property that it never decreases. That is, if we look at this transformation as a function of intensity, and if one particular intensity, say I1, is smaller than I2, then the transformation of I1 will be smaller than the transformation of I2. Now mathematically, we might represent this property of the transformation this way. We'd say that the derivative of the transformation with respect to intensity is always greater than zero. And in words, we say this is monotonic increasing. A consequence of this property is that if we look at the cumulative frequency distribution for our original image, then that will be equal to the cumulative frequency distribution for our new image, but now not evaluated at an intensity i, but evaluated at the transformed intensity i. Now, of course, our relationship between the new image intensity and the old image intensity would be this. The new image intensity is the old image intensity transformed. Now, what this expression tells us is that if we look at the proportion of pixels that have an intensity less than or equal to i in our original image, that'll be equal to the proportion of pixels in the new image that have an intensity less than or equal to the transformed intensity i. And that happens because of this monotonic property. That is, if an original intensity is bigger than another intensity, then the transformation of that intensity will be bigger than the transformation of that other intensity. Now let's write this cumulative frequency in terms of our continuous normalized histogram. Well, this simple observation gives us two relationships that help us gain insight into how we can transform intensities and influence the histogram for an image in a particular way. So let me repeat this one. We have this relationship that the original, the cumulative frequency distribution for the original image is equal to the integral from 0 to ti. So i is the intensity at which we're going to evaluate the cumulative frequency distribution. ti is the transformation of that intensity that creates our new image. And then we have the normalized or the frequency histogram for our new image. 
and we'll integrate it from zero up to that transformed intensity. So that's one relationship. Now recall that the derivative of the cumulative frequency distribution is the normalized histogram or the frequency histogram. So if we differentiate both sides of this equation, we'd find this relationship that the normalized histogram evaluated at some intensity i is equal to, well if we differentiate this with respect to i, we'll get the new normalized histogram evaluated at this upper limit, which is the only function of i here, times the derivative of the transformation with respect to i. So these two relationships help us understand how the histogram is transformed when we transform the intensities through a particular transform that's denoted by this function, t sub i. Well, let's look at a few examples that show how we can perhaps pick this transformation to get a desired histogram for our transformed image. Well, let's see if we can figure out what the transform would need to be if we wanted to create a new image whose normalized histogram was a constant. So in this situation, the normalized or frequency histogram as a function of the, of the new image intensity is just a constant, 1 over i max. So if we integrate that from 0 to i max, we'll get 1. Well, if that's the case, then the relationship between the cumulative frequency distribution for the original image intensity and our transformation would look like this. So instead of the histogram for the new image, we'll use this form for it and it's just 1 over I max. and we integrate that from 0 to the transform intensity i for every value of the intensity i. Well that'll be equal to transform intensity over the maximum intensity. And that tells us that the transform intensity, the transformation of the intensity, should be equal to the maximum intensity times the cumulative frequency distribution for the original image. So if we determine the cumulative frequency distribution for the original image, multiply that times the maximum intensity we'd like to see in our new image, and use that as a function of intensity, use that as our transformation, the transformed intensity, the transformed image will have a, history, a, a normalized histogram that's a constant. Well, let's look at another example. Suppose we'd like to have our transformed image have a normalized histogram that looks like this. So in essence, this is a we'd like to see a linear histogram, a histogram with this shape as a function of intensity. It go from 0 out to 
IMAX and it would increase linearly and then when we got to IMAX we'd have a value of 2 over IMAX so this would be just a situation where we wanted to see the transformed image have a histogram that was linear. Now I'm not sure why we might want that but let's suppose that we did let's see what we'd have to do to get that. Okay well let's use our relationship. So the original images cumulative frequency distribution is the integral from zero to the transformation of the intensity that we're evaluating the cumulative frequency at. Then we'll put in the new images histogram and that would be 2 now as a function of i. We've written it this way here. We'll need it as a function of x. So it'll be 2x over i max squared dx. And if we work out that integral that's going to leave us with the transformation of the intensity over I max quantity squared. So now we can use this to relate our transformation function to the cumulative frequency distribution for our original image. So our transformation for each individual intensity is the maximum intensity times the square root of the cumulative frequency distribution for the original image at that particular intensity. Well there's a couple of examples. If we have more complicated examples we just want to go back to this original equation, put in the functional form that we have for the desired frequency histogram and determine what the form for the transformation would be.